my job is cool. <laughs> my job is the best job in the world. I am not an astronaut. I am not a rock star. I don't write bestsellers. I don't get paid to review the best restaurants in the world. And I'm obviously not a basketball professional player. <laughs> but I am a global health researcher. <laughs> and by the end of this talk, my inbox should be full with all of your CVs, because you should all try and come work with me. I'm going to give you six reasons, in case you need to be convinced. My job is cool because it allows me to be useful, plain and simple. How many of you can say the same thing? How many of you do something for a living that really has an impact in other people's lives? As a global health researcher, I spend all of my time squeezing my neurons, trying to figure out why poor people become sick. I try to find out innovative solutions to improve the health of those who most need it. This is a good reason to wake happy every morning and to be excited about what I do. My job as a researcher is cool because it forces me to think outside of the box. If you really want to have an impact, you need to think differently. And not only computer designers get to have this privilege. I'll show you two examples. Yos. Sorry for the picture. Yos <laughs> is a tropical disease, one of those so-called neglected diseases, which means that nobody really cares about them. It is endemic in the Pacific and in some African countries. It affects mainly children and causes chronic ulcers. Okay, this disease will not kill you. But try walking around with this horrible thing in your leg. Not a good idea. Until very recently, Yos was treated with penicillin injections. Something that is not very practical, because you need to have trained personnel to administer the drug. And because most sick children live very far away from the health posts. My friend Oriol, a brilliant doctor, came up with the idea of assessing whether a single oral dose of a very simple antibiotic called azithromycin could eventually replace the painful injections. We tried this in Lihir, a small island in Papua New Guinea, one of the most remote places in the world, where one out of every 10 children suffers this disease. And bingo, it worked. Now this drug can be used massively to treat entire populations and eventually eliminate the disease. A simple idea, but a revolutionary solution to this problem. Malaria is another good example. Malaria is caused by a parasite that is transmitted through the bite of an infected mosquito. It kills an African child every 60 seconds. An effective vaccine against malaria could contribute substantially to reduce the burden of this disease. Unfortunately, it is not that simple. How do you test a vaccine in a place where people don't even have addresses? You don't have Travesera de Gracia 93 in a place like this. People challenge us and say that this would be an impossible task. But we've been successfully testing this vaccine for the last 10 years in a place like this, in rural Mozambique. And guess what? We are closer than ever to the first malaria vaccine, a major milestone in biomedical science. This vaccine could save the lives of hundreds of thousands every year. Research is also cool because you get to be in the media. The front page of the New York Times, that is so cool. But it's also so valuable. How much would it cost you to actually buy this space? We need 
the media to embark with us, to join us, to help us disseminate our messages. The media has the power to magnify our voices, to multiply our reach. We love the media. We need the media. By the way, 60 seconds have passed, and another child has died of malaria. These should be front pages every morning also in the newspapers. Researching global health is also cool because you get to meet famous and powerful people. <laughs> Don't get me wrong, it's not, it's not about glamour. <laughs> it's about commitment. When important people like Melinda Gates and her husband comes <laughs> to visit you, when they come to visit you at your workplace, you know you are doing the right thing. We need the powerful and the famous to remain engaged, to help us advance the global health agenda. We must ensure that the needs of the poorest of the poor are taken into account. We need the famous and the powerful to share their influence with us, as Julie Dixon was telling us from Seattle. My job as a researcher is so cool that even Working with the dead is exciting and worthwhile. Don't get me wrong, unless you are a Gothic, you don't really want to spend time with the death. <laughs> but the dead can teach us many important things for the benefit of the living. A few weeks ago, I was in Manisa a small village in the, southern, in the southern part of Mozambique. I had the opportunity of speaking with a mother who had recently lost her child. The child became ill at home and never reached the hospital. No one could tell what he had died of. The mother was desperately asking for answers, and I remained speechless. Isn't it amazing that in most poor countries, we still haven't got a clue what most people are dying of. How come haven't we managed to solve this very simple problem? How are we going to prevent future deaths if we're not able, even able to tell what are the most frequent causes of death? We need post-mortem science to guide us. We need to apply the technology in a field where research has also been dead for many decades. We need to develop the tools that could give us some insight on what people are dying of, the tools that may be applicable in places under different religious and cultural backgrounds, the tools that could be used in places where full autopsies are impossible to perform. These are the tools that can provide real and actionable answers. I wish I had had those tools when I was speaking with that mother. And finally, Research in global health is cool because it has allowed me to find love. <laughs> I am very, very lucky to have found somebody, someone that is as passionate, as committed to global health as I am. My partner Maria and I will soon be moving back to Mozambique, but this time, will bring along some twin new responsibilities. <laughs> so to conclude, let's move away from this silly idea that research can only be performed in a semi-obscure indoors lab by nerds and geeks. This is not true. <laughs> research can be done in the field where most major public health problems occur and are visible where it can provide positive disruption into the lives of millions of people. So if you are curious, if you are relentless, if you are ready to embark in the most wonderful of the adventures, I need you to join us in the quest for global health solutions. What are you waiting for? You love it. 